Game number one, we're in the final qualifier for the Banshee Cup, everybody. Battlefield of Eternity is our first map, and we have the Bobby Cottage Fan Club against the Cats. We are in the winner bracket. Again, final qualifier. And I already promised you that we have a twist prepared for the playoffs. Now, the playoffs will consist of, like, two phases. We have a group stage, and then we have the actual final. So, in the group stage, we have the top eight teams in split into two... two blah. The top eight teams are being split into two groups, and the top two out of each group make it then into the final weekend and will play a double elimination system there. Now, here's to the twist. Already promised you we're not going to go for some crazy draft rules, we're not going to force anything. So what we decided to do is something completely different and new that I think is going to be awesome. Now let us know what you think about it, if you have some new ideas, but generally I think you're going to be very happy with it. So essentially what happens is that once we're heading into the group stage, once we have the top 8 teams, each team has a bounty board. The bounty boards are going to be the same for every single team. It's just important to know that the teams don't share the same board. Each team has their own and therefore can uh, fin uh, can complete those, uh, those challenges. Now, with those challenges, in every single match, you can only complete a single challenge. So if you're playing a best of three another, against another team, you can only complete one challenge, one bounty in that match. If you want to complete another one, you have to wait until your next match starts. Here are the challenges. Win a game with a Butcher. Win a game with Jogal. Win a game with Nova. Win a game with Murky. You get the idea. There's a few more, and I will present you with a full list at some point once that we're going into the group stage. We have also some added ones where you have to win a game with Varian plus Twin Blades, with Abathur, but you have to pick Monstrosity. And there's a few win a game playing a full Overwatch team, a full Horde team, a full Alliance team. And it's going to be pretty epic. So we have some cool ideas. I'm sure that we can add more. I'm sure that you guys also have some awesome ideas for that. But it's all optional. And for every single bounty that you complete, the players get an additional $50. So they can make money completing those bounties. But if they say like, nah, we don't want to risk losing the game here, then they can just like let it slide and say like, okay, we're just playing for the prize money. There's still actual prize money on the line for the top teams. So it's really up to the players of what they think uh, they can get away with with you're on a 1-0 lead maybe you practice the cheeky murky strategy hey throw it out in game number two so could be absolutely perfect but yeah either way that's obviously not a thing for the qualifier yet that's going to happen in the playoffs and we are still in the qualifier and we get the bobby cottage fan club with malganeas garrosh and ixias zarya this is a comp that they've been playing for a long time now, and of course we all know that Ixia on Zarya is just insanely strong. It's uh, a hero that he's been playing over and over and over, oftentimes banned against them, but here they go for the combo. And I'm actually a bit surprised that Diablo got banned over Zarya or just Garrosh. They're also getting rid of Vala, given what's currently being played here. If you're going for that particular style, then of course you're looking for some really heavy four-man strategy at the bottom of the map. And you need a damage dealer that fits those rules. So uh, we'll see what we're going to get with that. Now, Anubarak and Liming open things up. And that means that Cocoon is going to get some value. Oftentimes what you're seeing instead is Anubra gets countered by Liming because you use this integrate against Cocoon and then just like burn it down immediately. But okay, we got the double pick after now Anduin has gotten the axe. And what are they grabbing? Come on boys. Specifically, I want to know also what they're doing in the format now because they have to deal with Garrosh and Zarya somehow and it's going to limit Anubarak's plays a lot. Yarel coming off well with Anubarak, good against players at the top lane, so it's going to be the two side laners locked into their 1v1. Or at least I would assume so. Yeah, they got Kane in the meantime. And with the red team. I want to see who that hyper carry is. Come on, you have one real damage dealer here. That's it at the end of the day. Are we going full Soljin on this one? Do we get Cassia into the mix? Or what's the game plan now? Still game number one. So plenty of heroes available. And they go Hanzo. Fair enough. They go Hanzo. Also great against the Immortal, of course. And we get Malfurion four heals. Played by Nagrom, as it seems. With Hiraz now the final pick. Are we going to get Greymane? 
Uh, Genji is also still up, by the way. You can't go for a light bomb combo, but you could go Li Ming and Genji. Could go for Grey Mane for immortal damage. So, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff that they could try and pull off now, and we'll see what they do. Uh, final pick for map number one, and it is Cassia. I kind of expected her on the other side, but all right. Battlefield of Eternity, first map. Let's go. Bobby Corbettish fan club against the cats, everybody. Game number one. Battlefield of Eternity is the map. And over on the left side, the Cats with Drakia on Liming. Deviant on Anubarak. We got Soaking on Ural. Herath is playing Cassia. Deckard Kane gets played by Captain Rex. Last but not least, West. Over on the right side of the map, it is the true and try combo of Garrosh and Zarya. Malganir and Ixia playing the two key heroes in that mix. Banana H with Hanzo, we get Virtual on Blaze, and we have, finally, Nagrom on Malfurion. So yeah, that bot lane is going to be super interesting with that Garrosh comp. And if you've been living under a rock for the last 6-7 years and you don't really know what exactly this is all about, then uh, check out Zarya's pick on level 4. She's going to go into Speed Bubble. At least that's kind of the game plan here. If she gets anything else and they are just confident in their abilities to play with Zarya just as is. But the usual combo between the two works that you speed up Garrosh and allow him to essentially run into the opponent's team with that extra speed that she grants. And then just absolutely flip everybody into the team and destroy them. So that's kind of the game plan. But we have seen different... I, I, I want to say we have seen different approaches by Ixia in particular because, again, he is somebody that loves to play Zarya. Generally speaking, though, if at any point you're seeing this specific combo played, it revolves around that speed bubble on uh, level 30. So, yeah, that is a thing. We're going to keep an eye on it, and time will tell. But for now, on level 1, we also get the charge strikes. So Cassia is already starting to play this one out. A lot of action is happening, but Zarya is actually up at the top, so she is currently going for the first camp, and oh, they're going for the first kill! And they might get it here! They got close, but everybody still walks away from this one. Yep, <clears throat> nobody gets killed in this one yet. Top side, though. Camp has been taken by the blue team. Initially, it was Zarya that made a move and was trying to take it. Couldn't quite make that work for the team, so a bit unfortunate. They're losing the camp. Down at the bottom of the map, the action also hasn't stopped. They're still making their play there too. The camp is still up on the other hand, so it could still be an opportunity for the red team to get their own. Traditionally, it is a split between the two teams when we're talking about mercenary camps on Battlefield of Eternity. Usually one team splits off a hero from the bot lane towards the top. They take one camp have a numbers advantage, and then your opponent takes the one at the bottom. This time it's a little bit different, the way that they've been playing this. Malganir! Yeah, he's dead, but so is Anubarak. So they're trading frontliners. Each team loses a frontliner in this context now. They're still hoping to get a few more hits in down at the bottom of the map. Zarya has now started to uh, take the camp. The objective is going to be announced in a second. So, yeah, first Immortal is up, and there it is! The Speed Barrier. It's bubble time. Get that speed in for Garrosh, and let him run wild. Literally and figuratively. So. Now, <clears throat> we got all the way topside. Virtual. With the Plap Horse! Come on, dude. Don't you have an epic mount? Maybe unique mount. A unique epic mount. Maybe something lizard I I don't know should check. I'm sure you can come up with something. It's definitely better than the pleb horse. The poverty horse. So, uh, well, each team has now the shaman camp set on the uh, lane, and there is the Hanzo advantage, of course, when you're talking about the fights here. So Hanzo can always jump down Immortal super quickly. Li Ming is great here, too, when, she, when there's a stalemate situation, so she can always fire her combos away, and somebody has to soak them. Either it's the Immortal or it's going to be a teammate. There's the heal, nice, keeping Anubarak alive for a moment, but then he gets targeted again and goes down. The exterminators are in the house and the bug gets buttered. And he's not the only one. Whew! Deckard Kane, he is just getting wrecked, flipped into a jet propulsion from Blaze and murdered. And that's a little halftime show victory already for the boys in red. So off to a great start here. Three kills to one. 
and working on the objective. Another flip. The root. That's a kill, isn't it? Moonfire is ass. Come on. <laughs> Malfurying its stone forward. Uh, he could have gotten the kill there. He didn't get actually the kill. So Cassia goes down, and they are just toying with them now, aren't they? Anubra came back and he died immediately again. He must love the Nexus because he's going back to it time and time again. Five kills to one and I did not expect the Space Goofs to struggle this much. Those teams played, well, they played against each other in the past already. It was always just a huge match. Now, to be fair, I would give a mid-game and late-game advantage to the blue team just on the decision-making uh, aspect. Doesn't mean that they're gonna win the game. But I love how the red team is just continuously improving. I've been talking about this in previous qualifiers already. It just always feels that they are learning from every single loss that they're taking. And that's just the most important part when you're participating in these tournaments. So they've been getting stronger. And here at least they are able to also do a significant amount of damage with the first objective. Not only do they have a one level lead, but they're also dropping that fort rather low. The dream is to take it down, but I don't think they can go that far. They might also lose one of the heroes here. Malgany gets away, but Nagrom, the bubble. Yes! They lose a new Brock again. No! And Malf survived. Oh, God. That's two heroes down. Make it three. Yeah, that hurts. That definitely hurts. That's not something that they wanted to happen here. So, yeah, look at this. And Nubarak was the first one to fall. Then they get a hold of Liming, they kill her. And then afterwards, just another play made for Cassia. That's three heroes down, level 10. They have a two-level lead on level 10. It's getting a bit nice. So, yeah. Nine kills, two, one. Okay, so level 10 is in. And off we go. So, hmm, tough start, really tough start. Questions of course, how do you bring that back now, right? How are you making sure that this is not an easy win for your opponent? Arrow comes through, you're yeah, fighting against an opponent that has level 10 abilities already. You know that you're not going to be in for an easy game. Specifically with the Immortal now spawning, I mean, how do you even deal with this? It's going to be next to impossible. Yurel gets farmed because she doesn't have her ult yet, so there's no bubble play that she can use. And this is just not looking good. I love how the French team is showing absolutely no mercy here. I mean, they know that they have a lead that is incredible, so they're trying to make the best out of it. They're playing super aggressive, they're looking for other kills. Malgany in this case is just missing out on that a bit. I was hoping to uh, get a hold of Anubarak again and help them with another kill there. But they are absolutely crushing this. The 4 down to 50% of its HP. And now with the Immortal up on the map, they're making an easy play for it too. And they're looking great. After level 10, maybe a chance for the blue team to slowly bring this back. But as things stand, they are... Yeah. They need a bit of a miracle here. Decimate is of course in. We now have also Cocoon. And I suppose Wave of Force for Liming? Yeah, she's been hesitating there a bit. You're playing with the Nubarak, not against him. This integrate would be the pick if you're playing against him. When you're playing with him, you can definitely go Wave of Force. Get that utility and then make your big plays. Now the funny thing is that only the blue team has lost a fort. That's the one good news. Structurally, the red team is ahead, but it's only one. There's only one fort that has been destroyed. Now the top fort might fall since the camp is now pushing in. Oh boy. Deckard Kane, the old geezer, is gone once more. That's rough. Now they don't have a healer. It's 11 kills to one, by the way, and they're not stopping. Brrrr. Ixia just coming in, lasering Cassia into the ground. That's another kill for them. Easy peasy. And they're continuing the same little play over at the Immortal. Take this one too. <laughs> what a disaster for them. What an absolute disaster for the Space Goofs. The top fort has already fallen to the Shaman camp. So now you have that problem. You also have the issue that your opponent has essentially, what is this, 90% on the shield for the Immortal. So yeah, huge, huge Immortal damage. 
about to come. And we are only on model number two. I mean, again, the good news is this is only nine minutes in, so it's not going to hit that hard. But this is still a massive shield for the second one. And they're going to lose the wall at the keep for sure. Are they going to lose the keep? I kind of doubt a little bit. I don't think they can go that far with it unless they're picking up a kill here. Which I would not put past them. They have a level 13 talent advantage, a 2 level lead. And they also have, of course, still a Garrosh that can with a speed bubble run in and try and flip somebody over. So, that's still a thing. Urel is already sitting at the side here, gets quickly sniffed out. Yeah, Soaking has to retreat and does. And Uberak is dead again. He likes dying, doesn't he? I mean, he tried it and... I mean, he's a cockroach at the end of the day. They always come back. You just can't kill these fuckers, but still. He's down five times, and Urel has also get destroyed, and that's the end of Liming. Ruthless, savage, brutal, savage, wrecked. They're getting murdered. 15 kills to one. The Bobby Cottage fan club goes through the red team, to the blue team, like hot butter through cheese. Showing zero mercy here, and just stopping short of the core, just saying, you know what, guys? Death timers are low. How about we don't risk anything here? And I actually like it. I like that they're playing the save. They had some games in the past where they thought they were the winners for sure. And they lost because they got wiped at the core, for example. So in this case, they just play cool, calm, collected, very slow. And they just say, all right, guys, we got this. Let's just play it slow. Two level advantage, 14 kills ahead. We are absolutely dominating these plebs. So instead of just risking it all and throwing it potentially away, we're going to play the slow game, wait for level 16, murder another objective, and then, then we're going to go for the final blow here. And that's what they're going to try. So Li Ming gets flipped again and dies too. And the entire team just gets farmed. That arrow goes nowhere, by the way. But with that said and done, they still were hoping to grab at least an Uberak. And Uberak is going for di double digits, I'm telling you. He's at six deaths already. Double digit deaths seem to be a thing that was prophesied. It is written. But yeah. <laughs> Level six is actually kind of nuts. And whatever I expected here, yeah, I did not expect the fan club to walk away with such a dominant performance. Li Ming just picked into a glass cannon, by the way, and honestly, why not? At that point, they're so desperate, you might as well try to try to YOLO it completely. You've already been farmed. It's, you can't die more than, like, you're already dying, so might as well, right? Maybe you can kill them faster than they kill you. That has to be the approach here. Zarya now with Cleansing Shield. Unstoppable competitor, and they go for the immortal. It's looking good for the French team. It is looking very good for the French team. So, yeah, the Frenchies, they are in the driver's seat. 17 kills ahead and three levels. That's nuts. It, that's just crazy. I mean, think, think that through for a second. 17. They're getting absolutely crushed here. A bit of a Hail Mary attempt by the blue team now. Look how low health their mortal is too. Cocoon is on the ground. They're missing the stun. And this is not working. This is absolutely not working. And Uberak, oh, Jesus, they're shifting their target over to Cassia. She gets crushed. No chance for her. And this is just a cleanup job. At this point, the fan club is just trying to take out the trash here. They destroyed Cassia. They're going for soaking. Yeah, Irel trying to jump away here, and they know that they're getting absolutely ripped here. So, that's a 100% shield on the Immortal, <laughs> and it's going to stomp through the bot lane. And now we're 13 minutes in, what is this, Immortal number 3? So yeah, this bad boy is going to start to hurt a bit more. 48,000 damage from Hanzo, and we got 35,000 from Li Ming. Five deaths on Cassia. Suffice it to say, this draft has not really worked for uh, the space groups. I mean, it just hasn't. They're trying to go for the Urel flank, more or less. She is on cooldown. No chance to use anything. The level 16 advantage is obviously another huge thing that they have over their opponent's team. And yeah, we're seeing it right now. So the attacks, they keep coming. That's the Twilight Dream. And boy, oh boy, are they getting murdered. Nobody falls on the red team side. Two are low on the blue team. And, yep, they are in trouble. And in a lot of that. <laughs> it keeps gone. <laughs> it's a disaster. 
It is an absolute disaster, guys. What a game. I mean, seriously. The fan club with a huge win here. I think at this point we can call it one. 20 kills ahead, three levels ahead, and they are just going full farming simulator here. The core is falling. They got a few more kills in their sights. Soaking is getting moon fired to death if he is not careful here. But the core is falling faster, I'd say. So yeah, this is game. This is a 1-0 lead for the French team, for the fan club. GG, nicely done. Well played. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calda TV. So, game number two between the Bobby Cordish Fan Cup and the Space Goofs. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's the cats. I have seriously no idea when exactly in game number one I decided that I was still casting the Space Goofs, but obviously there was a massive brain fart, and for some reason I, it just stuck with me. Reason was probably that in the series before it was a single map between the Space Goofs and the Svenskas because the Svenskas got one death loss and so in, in my brain I was still in the same series and previously and it didn't help that the colors were the same too. So I was just like oh yeah this is like the, the match that I casted just now like five minutes ago. But yeah I swear to god I'm not drunk. I can maybe claim dehydration because I had my long bike ride again today, it's the Saturday after all, so we did another four or five hours. And it's warm in Spain, so maybe I can claim that. But then again, I've been drinking ever since I came home. Water! I drank water since I came home. Uh, so, yeah. I'm chalking up to old age or something. Oof. Gal being banned on Tomb. Why you hate fun? Also, these fuckers didn't switch sides. They, they, they <sighs> If I don't pay attention every single time, they're just screwing things up. It's ridiculous. I mean, honestly, that tilts me a little bit. Nobody else noticed that. Nobody went for this. This wasn't a thing that anybody caught. Like, I caught it, you know? So, at least I caught it. But is this the first tournament you play in, boys? I mean, come on. This should be something that teams are now used to. So, yes, the Frenchies are on the left now. They are the ones banning Shogun. I was thinking, like, like I looked at this, I was like, I could totally understand if, you know, if the if the Frenchies ban Shogun, because the cats have played it in the past. It's like, so this doesn't make sense to me. Why would the cats ban that? Then I'm looking at the player names, and I'm like, the fuck? Ugh. Pulling a fast one here. It's not my day. It's not my day. Off with their heads, definitely. So, Jojo for the cats. Now I have to like <coughs> my head a little bit here. I may get Diablo plus Sylvanas. All right, all right. We're getting in the zone now. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I have no idea what's going on today. <laughs> it's the final qualifier. Maybe that's why. I, I really don't know. But yeah. Uh, okay. Double pick for the cats now. And I always said I'm a I'm more of a dog person, right? I have nothing against cats essentially, but I'm more of a dog person. Lately though, Stormgate makes me hate dogs. Stormgate really makes me hate dogs. Those Stormgate dogs, I mean, Jesus. That early harass, now thankfully at least the upgrade has been nerfed a little bit in the recent patch. But whew! Early dog rushes and them just controlling the map and you move out onto the map with a single gaunt or whatever and it, you immediately die. Tim was killed by them in the last tournament, so it was just like crazy. So Stormgate is gonna be the game that makes me makes me hate dogs. It's really gonna happen eventually. By the way, if you don't follow my Stormgate channel yet, I see you YouTubers. The link is in the description of the video. So yes, second channel for Stormgate. The game's gonna be big. It's the future of RTS. And yeah, I know that's gonna be that one guy that sits there. Nah, 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 but what about StarCraft? StarCraft is abandoned by Blizzard because Blizzard has turned into a shit company and I will take a good RTS that is being in active development and being developed by a company that is passionate about it any day. So yeah, that's my two cents. You're welcome to disagree. But the link is in the channel. You need to click it and you just need to sub to the channel. The Haka and Brightwing. We're apparently we're globaling it up a little bit. I mean, it's Sumo Spider Queen, so it's not really that big of a map, but we've seen the Haka before here. So they can definitely do that too. 
And off we go with the final double pick. I mean, I like the AoE that they have. Jojo, Leo, it's about as good as it gets. And we have Greymane. So. And there's Rega and Junkrat. So. I actually kind of like this. We have Junkrat that can easily interrupt uh, any kind of turner that happens. You have the, the wolf pack here, a little bit more AoE with Rega thanks to the lightning shield. Leo good on the bot lane, Jojo. That's a pretty sweet one for them. So the cat's obviously eager to bring this back now. Uh, and Banana H. The final pick! Tomb of the Spider Queen, everybody! Game number two! The Bobby Cottage fan club against the cats. I swear to god I'm gonna remember. I remember. And we have Chromie. <laughs> Let's go. Map number two. Bobby Cottage on the left side. The French team with the lead in the series and a chance to take the Cats down a second time. Drop them into the loser's bracket and move on to the next round of the winner bracket themselves. So, we got Malgany on Diablo, Virtual on Dehaka, Ixia on Brightwing. We have Banana H on Chromie. Nagrom is playing Sylvanas for the team as they are moving into game number two. On the right side, the Cats with Soaking on Leoric, Ereth on Greymane. We got Captain Rex on Rega, Deviant on Johanna, and Drakir on Junkrat. Now, just saying, we could get the insane level 20 bullet games again from the Cats here. Chad actually made fun of me a little bit and said that they found it hilarious that it was the Cho'Gal band that snapped me back into reality. And it was it was really so weird because I just looked at the draft and I was like, why would they ban a hero that they are known for playing that oftentimes gets banned against them? And then I realized, wait, they swapped sides, everything's wrong, eh, eh, error, error. And yeah, but now we got it all fixed. We got it all figured out. So, top side, we got uh, Brightwing taking hold of this. I like the AoE, I've said it before. The cats have really good AoE here. They can easily move between lanes and just do their thing. We have with level 1 talents, the fealty onto death. Greymane, as I said before, I would love to see some bullet and then level 20, just him sniping that over and over again like we've already seen once previously. That's actually a fun one. And off we go. With the bounty system that I already again introduced as the twist for the playoffs and the finals, I think what I'm looking forward to the most is if somebody is playing a Meme Blades variant, if we're getting that, and if somebody is going for Abathur Monstrosity. And just to make this perfectly clear, because some people still haven't gotten the memo, Twin Blades variant is utter trash. It's total garbage. It's shit. If you want to win the game, then you don't go for it. Does that mean you cannot win the game with Meme Blades variant? Oh, of course you can, but you win the game then despite picking Meme Blades, not because of it. That hasn't changed. There's still people that are running around on Reddit and somewhere else who are like, I don't understand why people pick Taunt. Well, because in Plastic League, you don't need it, I suppose. In Plastic League, you can win with anything. But if you want to play in a tournament, and if you want a chance to advance, there's Taunt, and that's it. Nothing else. Occasionally, we get the... The one in a hundred game smash, and it usually ends with Varian losing. So yeah, meme blades, not a thing. Maybe a thing in quick match, maybe a thing in Storm League, but this is not what these games are about. This is actual top level competition. Um, yeah. Nothing amuses me more, by the way, than when we always have like people uh, that watch some of the tournament games and they're coming in and saying like, "Oh my God, this is like this is like silver. Uh, this is this is so bad. Look at this." What is this, like low plat? And then they draft their own team, play against one of these teams, and they lose without taking a single kill. <laughs> it's always amusing to me. We actually had that happen once or twice. It was a while ago, but it was just like so juicy. People don't understand how low the margin of error is that you can get away with in these games. And yeah, it's kind of funny. It's hilarious. Like theory crafting is always easy. But people always think that they can still make the same mistakes that they're making in, uh, in Storm League or anywhere else. If you give your opponent a window that big in a tournament match, then yeah, you're getting murdered. And well, the Cats, they got murdered in game number one. They got absolutely murdered. Now they have the first kill, and they're looking a bit better. That draft, I really like it, as I said before. Not guaranteeing them a victory here by any means, but I think now they can at least fight back. And hell, it's about time, because this is what I was kind of expecting here. So, uh, yeah, let's see. 
Maybe they can pull ahead a bit. 20 to 26 gems currently, but 20 have been turned, they have 33 still. Oh, and that's a kill. Jojo is gone, but she also completed her quest. Hey, totally worth it. If you complete subdue and you die for it, that's great. <laughs> I would take that any day of the week. Uh, if, if I get a guaranteed quest completion with subdue just for one death, I'm all on board of it, with it. That's sick. That is absolutely sick. 80% slow is crazy good. So that's amazing. But yeah, is that gonna win them the game? That could win them the game. Depends a little bit on the situation. So let's see how they can use Johanna in all of this. For now, Diablo goes down too. They can't really hold the gems. I mean, in an ideal world, obviously, you make sure that your opponent doesn't even get there. Look at Chromie. Basically, Chromie stops walking the second that Deviant puts in uh, his, I guess, his, puts this up due to good use. So that will allow your damage dealers to do a lot more damage in those situations. So big, big play for Johanna to complete that. That's going to be maybe even what wins them. It could, it, like it seriously could potentially win them the game. This is how strong this is. If you are able to uh, hit, is to slow somebody down like a key hero and a good engage, and then you get the kill there, that would be amazing. But again, either way, we're gonna double check what they can pull off as time continues. What we get for now is the first web weaver wave for the red team. So I gotta be happy about this. Chromia has already gone with the temporal loop here. And the attacks are now slowly coming with Web Weavers joining the fun. It is Web Weaver time. And the red team, they want to draw even with their opponents. They want to take the Frenchies out. Show them uh, the exit. So, bit of a leading experience. Three kills to one. Top side gets slowly opened up. At the bottom, they're still pushing. And this is where they're trying to go for the 4-2. And they got Grey Main, and if you have Grey Main, you can usually take structures out so much faster, and you can already see it here. With only two defenders, there was absolutely no hope of saving this fort, so it gets destroyed. Malganir now getting attacked as well, but he's still a. Ooh! I was about to say, like, easily getting away there, but charges in again. You gotta be a bit careful, your opponent has nearly level 10 abilities, and once level 10 is in, it's going to be entombed for Leoric, and that can really ruin your day when you charge in a bit too deep. You can quickly just say like, all right, I got this. So in Tomb, we get indeed the bullets. I really want him to hit level 20 again. Give me that low cooldown machine gun. Give it to me. I need it in my life. It was so much fun the last time. Lightning breath is in and ready. And we get the isolation. Right wing with blink heal. Over on the left side, Banana Age and Ixia going for a camp two. Red team has already finished off theirs. Yeah, and Malganir eats the bullet. He's a big target too, uh, pretty hard to miss. Nice move by Junkrat. Is that gonna get them a kill? And yes, it is. Bryden was trying to help, but couldn't. And the slow came into play here again. So yeah, they were able to do something with the slow too. Now they're trying to go for soaking, but they can't get him. <clears throat> Talking about the blue team here. Yeah, so the defense is coming in. 51 gems. I mean, the blue team holds most of theirs still. So maybe we can see a double turn in from the red team. They certainly are about to have the gem count. Yeah. Diablo, again, a bit of trouble. He's pretty low in soul stacks too, so he is not as hit point heavy as you would want him. But he has the barbecue and he takes them on. Greyman and Jojo both dead. Barbecue is something that the Spanish, by the way, don't do as well. They're fantastic with paella and other stuff, and some are also being done in a bit of a barbecue style, but honestly, so far, the best barbecue is still still Germany. I guess in the US it's kind of fine, but in California, I never really had the... At least the people that I hung out with, it was, barbecue was never really big on their agenda, but usually I suppose that the US is also big on, uh, on barbecues, but I haven't really been at one. But Germany, where you have like, you know, those small barbecues, just like always with friends, family at the weekend, or just during the week there a little bit, always great. That's something that Spain sucks at. I love Spain, really happy living here. But there's a couple of things where I'm just always like, yeah, this is just better at home. Spain sucks at Christmas too. They're amazing with other festivals, when we're talking about fires, for example, but Christmas, meh. It's really meh. A little bit bigger into Three Kings as a vacation, as a holiday anyways, but yeah. There's a couple of things. 
where they're lacking. Anyways, with that now said and done, there's the attack, and can they... I like how Junkrat is always trying to just isolate another target here. Sylvanas has even done more damage up at the top, has going for a bit of a sli split push approach, which really helped them to get this fort low. So, despite the fact that Leo is now dead, the biggest accomplishment here was really opening all of these walls up and dropping multiple forts low. That helped them quite a bit. So, the fan club is not just taking this. They are saying, no boys, we still have a chance here, and we're going to fight back. They have even talents now with the opponent's team, and they're looking fairly strong here. Greymane also gone, so they are picking up kills, and they're picking them up quickly. Mm -hmm. There's the Entomb, but I don't think that they can do anything with it. Right Wing is coming in just to be on the safe side, I suppose, not making any big plays. The Cats over on the right side... Have, I mean, they're suffering through the second wave of web weavers now. Turn in has just happened, and there's now the opportunity to get even more done with this. So, can they? We'll see. Alrighty. So, 13 to 14. There's the advantage. And we got fast forward over here for Chromie. Jumping a little bit ahead, isn't she? As usual. But how many forts can they take out? Top side is gone, middle of the map gets destroyed, and the entire defense is looking at the bottom and is hoping that they can at least keep this one uh, in play. I... well, maybe now with Diablo? Okay, he might be in trouble here. Diablo, and he gets blown up. Diablo is gone, but he had his soul stacks. So, back on the map in a, in a, in a jiffy. Then again, this is also a little bit annoying. Losing the entire wall up at the top? Yeah, that kind of sucks. They're losing a lot here. This web beaver is left to its own devices is doing way more than they're probably going to be comfortable with. 41,000 damage by Greymane, 34,000 by Chromie, and talking Greymane, the big bad wolf jumps in, gets a kill on Sylvanas, they take Brightwing out. Now Malganir with the 26 gems is desperately trying to survive and get away, and it's just not happening. I, it's not happening. That's 26 more gems down the drain. Now, the good news is they just got another turn in, so there's a lot of gems that they were already able to turn in and secure, but that's still a lot lost either way. And now that there's only two heroes on the map, they don't even have to bother with the objective. The cats are just simply going into the middle, take the fort down. They have a leading experience already that translates directly into level 16 talents. Leo going full drain on this one, by the way, with crushing hope and also the unyielding despair. And now they can still go for their turn in. And they have essentially enough gems for a double turn in, assuming that they don't lose anything. They're gonna pick up a few more here, and then they can go for two turn ins in a row, at least technically speaking. Both teams with 16. Now they attempted a kill, didn't really work out. Leo's a little bit low. Sokin has 22 gems and dies. Loses them, and nobody picks them up. I think Deviant got a few of them. Deviant picked up some. Alright, and now they're trying for Greymane. And he gets cleansed. That was an important one, because if not for that cleanse, he would have died. They are still attacking, with Leo still gone. So in the middle, the Haga is trying to do his thing. They also have to secure their bottom wall at the keep. Same procedure, essentially, which we've seen on the other side just a few moments ago. So, yeah, that's another one to keep an eye on. But the Haga already has it on his list, so he moved in, started with it. But they are hoping to at least take that fort out at the top. Funnily enough, by the way, talking about forts, this one is still standing. It's ridiculous. I thought this one would fall 100%, but they weren't able to take it down. So, yeah. So technically, I mean, no catapults, right? This is where the red team pulls ahead now. The cats are ahead. At least in structures. And in experience. Nice ancestral. Good move by Rega. Perfect timing from him. Keeping the Haga alive, but I think they're still gonna lose some here. Rega gets zipped in, Deviant is low, bye-bye Jojo. Can they at least pick the gems up? Oh, that hurts. What was that, 30? I think he just lost 31 or 32 gems here. Yeah, that's bad news. That is really bad news. That is a huge chunk of ka -ching. So, 58,000 damage from Greyman. Good for him. Eight kills to seven. Now, this is more like it. This second map is really more like it. Huge back and forth between the two teams now. And they are way more on eye level with this. This is more what I expected. 
catapults nearly on the core here. Uh, we're 13 minutes in again. They're not ending the game or anything. But what they are doing is they're stealing the opponent's camp away, and I like it. Cheeky! Yeah, come in, take the camp, but there's still a boss up at the top, and this is going to damage the keep directly, so they have to properly defend here. This is obviously the good thing and the big advantage now for the red team that they're, sorry, for the blue team, that they were able to get this done. And that is the keep down to 50% HP. That's not too shabby. That's actually pretty good. And with Sylvanas in their midst, they just move down to the bottom of the map and take down the bottom fort. So this is the final one. Obviously, they dropped the one in the middle too. I mean, that one was basically only held together by spit and some bubblegum. Oh, and Diablo gets the Junkrat treatment. And they catch the Haka with 29 gems. Can they get him? Ah, they can't. Still at Burrow. They still need to send somebody up to the top. I think that keeps... Yeah, that keeps gone. Can they win it? No, that keeps gone. That keep is 100% gone. One more hit. One more hit. And there it is. Keep gone. Full catapult pressure. By the way, on the only lane where the red team hasn't taken out the fort yet. Which, of course, just makes it immediately worse. 62,000 from Gereyman. Again, level 20 talents are coming up next. It is a keep really interesting game. Each team has now lost a keep. Keep at the bottom of the map was obviously lost there earlier. We talked about it. Catapults even made it towards the core. But that means if you win a team fight and you win it big time, you can technically start to make a move for the core itself. So definitely possible. Question is just are the teams going to try and pull that off? Yeah, the Entomb is out. Fight without level 20 on both sides. Soaking low and he's dead. So... Uh, he's down. There's level 20. Brightwing with the invisible friends. They could really rename this. Brightwing doesn't have any friends. I mean, even no, like even invisible friends. Nobody wants to be Brightwing's friend. So. Come on, Greyman. Do it. Do it. Give me the bullet. Give me the bullet! No! Nope. That's sad. That is just sad. Hunter's blunderbuss again. Boring! Looks like he wants to win the game or something. Nah, I was really hoping for the Galenian roulette. That was... It was so awesome the last time they did it. But, yeah. Nine kills to eight. Both teams on level 20. And we have Web Weavers. Blue team. Absolutely ready to take another keep down. And, of course, they're hoping to do may more than that. They're hoping to end the game here. Hit it big, come in, take down a hero or two, and then just go straight for the core and win this one with the 2-0. And, well, they could actually pull it off. They are already in the lead, as is, so they have a chance here. Mm -hmm. And the first Web Weaver is already in position for that. So the blue team instead is mustering up all of their heroes at the bottom of the map. The Frenchies trying to break through the gate and take this one on. Uh, that one should be easy. But can they actually take anything down? It honestly doesn't seem like it. They destroyed a wall, I guess. But do you see a keep falling? Unless they're killing a few heroes now. I don't see that happening. And I guess they hurt me. Because they take Diablo, uh, Leoric down. That's at least one. Question is, how much does that help them? Does that help them enough to poke that keep? And uh, it might be a bit tricky. Catapults at the top could go for the core soon, but it's only a single catapult. That Ancestral might not have been... Well, actually, the second Ancestral was sick. Greymane, damn, they kill him finally. But Rega couldn't have done anything else here. I mean, Rega was really working that. And particularly the second hit from Farsia's Blessing was absolutely perfect. It still didn't help Greymane. He still died. Now the second keep is destroyed, so you have your bottom keep and your top keep destroyed. Which is really devastating because both of those are atrocious when it comes to the boss. If there's a standoff at the boss at the top, the bot lane is going to push and it's going to push for a core. Actually, in this case, it's an equilibrium because the uh, keep on the other side has been lost too. The boss is still going to be crucial because there's no top keep any longer for the red team, for the cats. Which means that if boss gets taken, this time it's going to go directly for the core. But they haven't pinned down. They really haven't pinned down. I mean, look how the fan club is just rotating from one lane to another. 
and really trying to ensure that they're not getting out of this chokehold that they find themselves in. They want to take the final key down. They could be able to make that happen. So 10 kills to 9. And soaking. Marshes. He's a bit low. Could still make a play here. Does he have in two? In a second. Ah, but he's... Well, maybe he can land against the Harker. He could try for in two here. Ah, and he misses it. No, that's unfortunate. Hashtag unlucky. Talking about unlucky and <laughs> that keep. It was close to getting destroyed, but not quite. So there's still one standing. It's kind of funny how things change now. A couple of minutes ago, the team in the lead was definitely the Cats, just by a bit. But now you can definitely argue that it's the fan club. Bobby Cottage FC trying to prevent the turn in. There's 56 gems in the hands of the cats, and they would love to get that turn in now. There is a camp of siege giants and catapults at the bottom of the map. Eventually, that's going to push for core. Depends on how long that little standoff here lasts. That might become an issue, where somebody has to move away from it. And again, they don't have a global. The Harker is there for the blue team. If they find themselves in a similar situation, they can always send the Harker in. Let him deal with it, and then bring him back. But somebody needs to go down here and deal with it. But the Red Web Weavers are now coming in. I do not see that happening. No, Nagrom. There is no way. No way, Jose. That's not a thing. Yeah, not in a 5 versus 5. You, they, they bought some time for the Haka to deal with the bot lane and push this out. That's the only thing that they bought themselves here. They forced them to go to the top. So that Web Weaver down here is not going to do anything at the end of the day. But there was just no chance that they're actually trying to go for the boss. Ridiculous. Oh, Diablo. He's dead. Is he gonna get out of this? Slow, slow, slow. Right. Oh, he, okay. Yeah, yeah, still has his 20. Still has his 20 available. That saves him for now. Or is it? Diablo's dead? He'll be back. Web Beaver's gonna take the fort out at the top. They go for the Arca. Here's the chance. Here's the chance for them. And Sylvanas makes it out. Only Diablo died. And as mentioned, he is back to business now as well. So, interesting. This might not be over yet. But there's a chance for the red team to make it work. Chromi. Okay, she gets away. Greymane had to re realize that this is probably not going to happen for him. Uh, so, yeah. The rip tire also not too much of a problem. No additional keep lost. It's still wild to me that the keep on the red team side in the mid lane is still there. That's kind of crazy. Okay, they go for bright wing. That could be a kill. And Ixia is able to blink heal out of harm's way for now. So bright wing also still totally good. Bless shield. Diablo, they can't lose him. He's going to be down for the count. And Malgadir. <laughs> oh, he's dead, but so is Junkrat. What a fight! What a game! Like, what a finish here! And bam! Straight the Sandblast, right between the eyes. Chromie with a kill against Greymane. Now they go for Jojo. Try to take her out too. Leo is already gone. Is this the end? Are they taking Jonah down now? Is Jonah gonna fall? Rhaegar tries to keep her alive. And he's not managing to pull it off. Now they can, at a minimum, go for keep. They have a turn in. Yeah, they can go for everything. They can go for turn in. They can go for the keep. They can go for the core. This should be the end. The Haka, by the way, didn't die yet in this game. The Haka is the only one on uh, the blue team that hasn't died. Actually, I think he's the only one in the entire game that hasn't died. Nah, Rega hasn't died either. So they go for the game for the camp, and now I guess now it's not only keep, but it's gonna be core that they're going for. They could have turned in. They decided against it. Went for the mercenary camp instead. And well, here's the play. So. This is the chance to take the game. In it to win it, baby. And they're going to claim victory here. A 2-0 for the French team. They move on to the next round of the winner bracket, everybody. And they send the Cats down into the loser's bracket. Awesome game, though, on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Really nice back and forth. 14 kills to 13 towards the end. And hello? No way. You're shitting me. <laughs> Are you serious? Burn it! Burn it! <laughs> you are shitting me, right? 
<laughs> Guys, the French surrendered. The French just surrendered. That is insane. <laughs> How? Like, what? I'm already doing the outro. I'm like, that's in the back, 100%. And they lose everything. Yeah, that's a three mapper. The cats take two of the spider queen. <laughs> we are going to game number three, everybody. Absolutely hilarious. GG. <laughs>
Which team moves on to the next round of the winner bracket? Which team drops down into the loser's bracket? Let's find out together. Game number three. The decision going to be made on Infernal Shrines. On the left side, the Bobby Cottage fan club, everybody, with Aditha, played by Virtual. We have Malganir on Malganus. Ixir with Uther. Banana H is actually playing a multi-shot build. Again, this is kind of the only map these days where you can get away with a multi-shot build where it makes sense. Obviously, everybody is stacking up on the shrines, so in that context, you can really get a lot out of the AoE. Nagrom on Zeratul. And on the right side of the map, the cats with Soaking on Sonya on the side lane. We're getting uh, Varian played by Deviant, Dark Dorita aka Drakia on Mephisto, Irath on my F. And Captain Rex is playing Alex Straza. So, yeah, we're in for a doozy. I love it. It's gonna be fun. I was like games in general are kind of fun. Keep in mind, one of the bounties for the playoffs and the finals is play a game. Well, you have to win. You cannot only play a game, you have to actually win the game. Win a game with Abatha picking monstrosity as your level 10. And for Varian, we have one bounty. Pick Varian, uh, win a game with Varian and pick uh, Meme Blades. <laughs> I'm actually, this is something that I could see a team do. Play Varian in a side laner role and just like try and get the damage out of him, shield him with the double support or something. So I could definitely see that coming together. Could be kind of fun, but time will obviously tell. For now, we have an actual game. We have Vala trying to get her stacks together and Banana Age gets saved here. So yeah, good for them. He's still fine. In addition to that, we have Cleave for Zeratul could come in with... Uh, I mean, first of all, we're going to very likely see uh, Abasa support him as much as he can, get that symbiote over. We could uh, see it also on Malganir, but when it comes to copies, it's a little bit situationally dependent, but Zeratul is always a nice copy if you're just trying to leave out some damage and get an a quick kill in. You can also copy Vala, obviously, but looking at Uther, if it's more about the heals and sustain that you're looking for, he's also a really nice alternative that he can play around with. So yeah, there's plenty to do for Abasa here. And, yeah, we'll see how much they can pull off. But, well, now that we have Zaratul roaming between the lanes, the bot lane is where most of the fights are currently happening. So the teams are trying to make their moves and get a few camps, of course, too. Each team got one. Blue team focused on to the neutral one at the bottom. So they still have on their own side one left. What is going to kill yet, though? And for the Abatha team, they're obviously always kind of fine with delaying the game a bit. Abatha, oh, Zeratul going down. Damn, against Sonya, topside. Abatha apparently respecting the one-on-one, -on -one, or just griefing. One of the two. But I was just about to say, with Abatha, you kind of want to go into level 10 as quickly as you can, simply because that's when you unlock that second hit point pool for your team, and it's kind of needed. Well, fifth hit point pool. It will be kind of wild if you had only one. So yeah, one kill against zero. Bit of a leading experience already. And the camp now about to be claimed at the top. So this is actually working pretty well for them because they're going to have a camp top side. The blue team won't have one. Abatha is rotating to the bottom of the map already. Has then also the chance to use a bit of uh, body soak. There's no globals on the opponent's team. So as long as they know where everybody is, he can move out onto the lane even. It's not like we're playing Dehaka or anybody else here. The fight already in the middle. They're hoping to get a quick kill before the shrine gets even activated. Not happening thus far. And Sonya is still finding herself on lane. They are half a level ahead. For them, the goal would be to get level 7. They know they're going to be the one to lock that in first. So once that they have level 7, they have an easy time or a much easier time on the shrine. And that's what they're looking for here. Torn for Varian as usual. And yeah, up at the top. Party continues. Seems like uh, my F is going to take care of that. And since they are about to lock in level 7, the blue team isn't even responding to it. They're just sitting there saying like, yeah, whatever. This is not going to be a thing. We will have to let the first one go. A, we have Abatha. It's unlikely that we're going to be able to fully commit to that fight in the first place. But also you have the early level 7, so we're just focusing on the lanes for now. And with 34 to 0 stacks, I mean, they are starting to rotate over now, but this is more or less a foregone conclusion. They were trying to get a hit in here in the middle, which hasn't really worked out for, you, for them yet either. But, yeah, good times. I mean, right now, this is going to be... There's also a Frozen Punisher, by the way, so this one is going to be pretty powerful. They can start maximizing this quite easily, I'd say. Yeah, you can get a lot out of that. 
Frozen Punish at the top. There's a chance that they're taking the entire fort. Might be a bit of a wild dream, but who knows? Maybe they can pull it off. That would be the goal for sure. So, yeah, if they can get a kill early, that would be nice. Would also be the second kill in the game. Only look at Banana H. He's pretty low, and then Punisher is going to jump eventually. So Banana H has to be mega careful here. Since Uther is busy just healing Melgania or trying to, Melganus dies. Bala is too low. Oh, there's the taunt on Uther, and he is dead as well. That's two heroes gone. Sonya wasn't even here, which means that now we are definitely going to see them destroy the fort. Nothing to be done about it. One fort falls, and that's a level nine and a half for the cats. Yeah, the Bobby Cottage fan club is maybe still a little bit shaken from the previous map. So, hmm. Can they pull this off? Can they do it here? Can you imagine how mad the fan club would be? How mad would you be if you lose the second map the way you did? And then your opponent wins the series on the third. I would be tilted. I would be I would be tilted like I would need a new keyboard after that. I think so. I, I would probably need a new keyboard. I mean, just imagine it for a second. I guess it's worse if you have, if it happens in the final or somewhere, but it's bad enough as it is here. Uther is down. And okay. Now Grom, Luther's ghost was still a bit useful. So there we go. And in the meantime, we got Virgil. Slap it! Lazy slug. Come on, slap it. Slap it! Slap it! Jesus. What a lazy slugger. At least a bit of body soaking. They need to get to level 10. They need to get to level 10 quickly. And they're going to lose so much ground before that's a thing. Yeah, by now we have life binder, we got the containment disc, and the bottom for now that the minion waves are in, they could actually commit to this. They've taken another camp to send it into the middle of the map where we've seen Abyssal trying to keep things together. But since there's a mule in play, I would have really expected them to be much more aggressive around this. Abyssal has the copy now, we get a divine shield, and we get the dark conversion. Plus... Might of the Nerezim uh, for our boy Zeratul. So, yeah. Top side, Sonia. Bam! Murdered. That's Abatha. If Sonia goes a little bit too deep, then Abatha plus Zeratul are going to wreck. Divine Shield on Bala. She's at 28 stacks now for her level 1. So she's getting a bit more damage out of this. Misses the Reign of Vengeance. And Balaj is a little bit low. If he gets to... V jumps too close to the sun, he is going to die. But a nice leap down here. Vala is dead. Yeah, that's one of your main damage dealers gone. So now you rely heavily on Zeratul. But they are turning the fight around. The cats are showing their claws now. And the Dragon Queen has been popped. Big cooldown, obviously. Malganea is moving back through. The disc hits Uther. Can they go for him? Do they even want to, or do they just focus on Malganea instead? And it seems like that's exactly what's happening. In comes Mephisto! And with another engage of Varian, this is gonna be a kill. He's gonna have taunt in three seconds, but they all get out. The problem for them is that Sonya isn't here. Sonya is taking care of the rest of the map, and she actually helps them a lot with experience now, too. Level 13. Ooh, Varian goes down. Sonya arrives too late. And Life Binder. Damn, kicks in just in time. Ixia, bye bye. He's gone. Bye bye. And that might change the entire fight. I mean, the blue team is still totally willing to fight here, as it seems. It's a three versus three, essentially. But now that so Sonya's on the shrine, Sonya doesn't give a shit. Sonya does not care. Like, Soaking is sitting there, is like, yeah, the team, like, team play? Nah, nah, uh uh. Not needed. Nope. Nope. So he's just going for the shrine. Bit of spin to win to get his hit points back, I guess. But, yeah, they take the lead with 22 to 11. Alexstrasza dying is bad though because now they don't have uh, support anymore. They don't have any heals. So, yeah. Taunt! Oh, get wrecked, son! Zeratul, deleted. Absolutely deleted. Beautiful taunt, straight into Durance of Hate. And that was the combo right there.
Zeratul is gone. Alex Straza is on her way. And I think she can save Soaking or whoever becomes the next target. Yeah, there's the Punisher too. He got close for a second, but now Ixia dies. They're falling apart here. They, 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 they are, yes, the, the fan club, they're in a world of pain. That bottom fort is essentially gone already. And now Malganir died too. Soaking dropped him in the middle. The fort gets destroyed. The map control that we see for the cats is ridiculous. The French team is in real trouble now. They're in serious danger of losing the series as the cats are breaking through the bottom wall, crushing everything in their path, and are getting closer and closer to potential victory. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that the fort at least falls. They're not even trying to defend it here. Well, Vala kind of did, but they need more heroes on the map. So the fort will fall. They're baiting it over. They're trying to, but there's still some minions that they can use. And if they get kills, then it's, of course, a totally different story. So uh, Punisher's back at it. They're still looking for a kill, and they get it. Zeratul falls victim to another taunt play from Varian. The copy of Abatha is gone, and Malganir himself gets tethered. Varian has his taunt back in three seconds. And he didn't even need it. They kill him anyways. And they might go for Core right here. I mean, again, keep the problem in mind. The problem is Mule. Mule is the issue. If you don't finish it, your opponent is just going to repair the core over time. Disc is out again. That buys them time. Nice. Looking good. Keep in mind what happened in the last game. Mule is already on the ground. Shield is gone. But this is looking great for the cats. Uther is dead again. And the cats are on their way to glorious victory. Dragon Queen is pulled. And that's all she wrote. That's game. They're taking Vala down again. And they take the series. The cats. They move in to the next round of the winner's bracket. And we have the Bobby Cottage fan club dropping into the loser's bracket. GG.